Hello and welcome to the Book of Leaves podcast. My name is Cara and I am your host. Hello and welcome back to Book of Leaves. This is Monday. Today is Monday the 6th of April. Oh my god, it's April already this has been such a strange year of course if you're listening to this tomorrow I'm just gonna make your confusion about the days even worse because I have to remind myself what day it is I'm sitting here in my dressing gown I'm half dressed as in I'm wearing my pajamas under my dressing gown and then I put tracksuit bottoms on and my hair is in a ponytail to try feel somewhat productive as opposed to a messy bun it's just a messy ponytail I guess but I wanted to do an episode about Easter and I thought sure I may as well do that and I'll release it the day or the week before Easter so you're basically while we're in quarantine getting a book of leaves episode a week because sure what else will I be doing so this episode want to talk about Easter all right obviously there's a few things that we can imagine are going to come up like chocolate packaging Guilt, you never know. Lent, I don't know. So, I want to go straight into it. His- the history of Easter. Where did Easter start? Well, like a lot of festivals, Easter was originally a kind of pagan um, celebration for spring and new life and fertility. And it was also in the Anglo-Saxon uh, history. I've, all my notes are confused here. I'm just, I've got so many things written down in such a backwards way. But here, look, uh, now I found it, right? So there was this Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring and fertility called Eastra or Easter. So basically when Christianity came to the gaff, they were, they wanted to make conversion easier for pagans and non-christian religions so they kind of adopted a lot of pagan festivals and adapted them for their own so that's that's what happens with christmas and so that's what happened with easter as well so obviously in christianity this is around a time where jesus after three days he or he came back to life oh god my religion like knowledge is terrible but then in jewish religion we're also celebrating passover so there's a lot of religious stuff in the air and then if you're like me there's just a lot of of chocolate really there's just a lot of eating and you know you do lent you might try something for lent for for the sake of it and then after 40 days you just gorge and kind of make the whole thing kind of pointless but that's what I do anyway don't know about you guys so oh and one little fact I learned right so obviously we have the easter bunny so the easter bunny will come and deliver eggs to kids chocolate eggs and sweets and fill your basket and that's obviously so obviously it's all about fertility spring new life that kind of thing because you know sheep are giving birth to lambs and little baby rabbits are hatching hatching oh my god my brain is broke but all these new little new little bits of life are are coming back after winter so in australia they don't have the easter bunny they have the easter bilby because apparently bunny rabbits over there are seen as pests so the Easter bunny he was kicked out or she don't know and uh, the Easter bill we took over instead so I just I enjoyed that I thought I'd share that with you but that is kind of the whole idea it's this festival that started off for you know celebrating fertility and new life and then it's become a very kind of religious holiday and then in the 1200s I think is when the first kind of decorated colorful eggs and things start to come into it and obviously our society today will take advantage of any kind of holiday and try encourage people to spend as much as they can so eggs and gifts have just become really really popular and now people just buy each other so many chocolate eggs without really thinking about it okay so here's where we get into our kind of habits worldwide when it comes to chocolate in general and then specifically at easter time okay so to look at my notes here chocolate in general has a global carbon footprint of 2.1 million tons of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere annually that is 
mind boggling. That's roughly equating to the emissions of an entire city, the likes of all of Belfast for one year, the all of their emissions equals all of chocolate. So there's a lot of things that feed into that. For example, oh my God, I have so many pieces of paper. Oh, here it is. I found it. So chocolate worldwide, the just the cocoa bean comes from the cacao tree. I had to look that up and confirm that because that confuses me sometimes. It's worth about $100 billion. Now, looking at the ingredients, chocolate is quite a high, has got a high carbon footprint and a global um. Im- like has a high impact on the earth because of the ingredients so obviously there's land usage and water usage and all this involved with it so specifically there is a report that the University of Manchester released that I'm getting these statistics here from and I'll link that in the show notes it's actually quite understandable I read most of it sometimes my brain kind of went fuzzy because these are funny times that we're all in and my brain's already kind of delicate but the ingredients typically of chocolate that we buy in bags or bars is sugar milk powder cocoa butter vegetable fat cocoa mass flour pasteurized eggs salt butter whey powder and starch so the biggest energy demand obviously when it comes to chocolate is is making these raw materials so growing the the cacao trees but out of this the all the energy demand of chocolate 49 to 66 percent depending if you're looking at bags of chocolate or you're looking at bars or you know where it's like uh, cooking powder or other kind of miscellaneous chocolate things so that's why the the figure varies from 49 to 66 but that's all from uh, producing the raw ingredients milk powder being the biggest contributor of that because like between 31 and 47 percent because obviously if you're growing a cacao tree to get the coca bean for our chocolate if you want to make milk chocolate you need milk or milk powder and to get the milk you don't just grow a milk tree you have to grow fields of crop to feed a cow get the cow to the right size milk the cow so you're you're adding in so much more energy to get that milk powder as opposed to that like a one crop of vegetable fat to use instead so you have to get the cow to the right age and then get the milk from it that way and obviously the cow is eating a lot of energy to get to the right size so that's why milk powder is the biggest kind of uh, contributor to pollution or greenhouse gases um, in the production of chocolate. The biggest kind of carbon footprint. There we go. Got there eventually. And then, of course, you have the packaging effect as well. There's plastic, so much plastic involved. And obviously, shared bags of chocolate are worse because... If you get those sharing bags, there's just so much more chocolate. And you're also selling a lot of air, which we'll come back to because we're selling a lot of air around Easter time too. There's also fossil fuels needed for packaging because of the plastic. And yeah, there's just basically, there's a big carbon footprint when it comes to chocolate. This is not what you wanted to hear. It's not what I wanted to find out. I'm sorry to be the bearer of this news. And then also, ethically speaking, when it comes to uh, humanity, there is a child labour issue in um, in the chocolate producing industry, um, a huge slavery issue. So that's why we have fair trade movements and all. But then some people come out and start poking holes in fair trade. So I'm just giving you, I'm not going to put out any hazy kind of facts hazy facts is that is that a thing that can't be a thing I'm just going to put out actual facts that I've looked up online and the internet never lies no it's from an actual credited report and I'll link it in the show notes that was all from the Manchester University report so chocolate itself is quite a high carbon footprint and Ireland in Europe is the third highest consumer of chocolate okay this is after one 
we've got Switzerland. They're in top place. Let me remind you, they invented chocolate, okay? Then in second place, you have Austria. They're the second biggest consumers of chocolate and they're right beside Switzerland, you know, so obviously there's a lot of leftovers there. They're all kind of sharing. Then in joint third place, you've got Ireland and Germany. We love our chocolate and Germany's statistics of chocolate consumption have been falling, whereas Ireland's have not been. And the amount of chocolate is 7.9 kilograms per capita. That's like per person a year. That's how much we eat. That is a lot of chocolate. I think I saw something like 157 Mars bars, which doesn't really sound like a lot, but Mars bars are quite heavy. You know, it's not like a flake. Like a flake is a like, cho- I'm just making myself really want chocolate now, aren't I? This is, this is going, this is the opposite. <laughs> Of what we needed to happen. But anyway, so Ireland, we love our chocolate, okay, in general. Now, that survey, by the way, I'll include, that'll be linked in the show notes. When it comes to Easter, we're going to hone in on Easter now, okay? So there is a survey that Repack did, the recycling company, in April 2019. So this is last year. So obviously this year is going to be a little bit funny when it comes to Easter because we're all in lockdown. Are people going to be buying the same amount of eggs or will they be buying less? Will they be buying more because they can't see anyone in person and share dinner? Are they going to just be delivering chocolate Easter eggs instead to compensate for the lack of physical company and whatnot. So who knows? But last year, there was a survey of 554 people carried out by Repack. Again, I'll link it in the notes. Irish residents are expected to buy roughly 17 million eggs. That is a lot. That roughly equates to three and a half eggs per person so that's including 80 year old nana and also your one year old niece or nephew you know that's like three and a half eggs per person everywhere all over the country so we buy a lot that was sorry that was the 2018 figures and then they surveyed a few people in april then last year and irish resident residents are expected to recycle about thirty nine thousand tons of packaging from buying all these easter eggs which is enough to fill the aviva stadium to the roof almost twice so that is a lot of packaging now remember when we talk about recycling it means it'll hopefully be turned into something else so you know it will be recycled but it will still exist on the planet so that's 39,000 tons of packaging that's still going to be on the planet in some form or another you know originally recycling and I think I've mentioned this before was originally marketed to put onus on the consumers to deal with the problem instead of food manufacturers needing to deal with it you know so you and I we vote with our money and that's what they listen to. So we need to remember this when we're going shopping for Easter eggs. Okay, so I'm giving you this information before I give you the solutions. We've got happy, positive solutions coming up soon. Okay, um, so I just want to see if there's anything else that I'm missing there about the packaging. Oh, because of, yeah, of course, like Easter eggs, they need... You need food packaging of some sort to protect it from damage because unfortunately if it's damaged it won't be bought and then you end up with food waste which is even a higher carbon footprint again. So we, it's really important that if you're getting eggs you recycle the packaging, recycle the cardboard, recycle the foil, make sure that it's clean, dry and loose. And if there's any soft plastic, if there's little chocolate bars or bag of mini eggs or whatever that's come with it, you have to bin that. If it's soft, bin it. We can't recycle that here. It's not, the quality of the plastic isn't high enough, so that has to go in your bin. Now, obviously, I'll go talk more about this later, but the goal would be to avoid excess packaging in the first place. And I'll give you some tips as how to do that and ideas as to alternative Easter egg ideas as well. Now, actually, I'll do that now because I think that's pretty much that's all the the kind of scary statistics on chocolate and how much we consume. 
Right. Yeah, that's everything. I'm just checking on my notes here, 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 here. Um, yeah. Right. So let's look at our suggestions. Okay. So first of all, there's some companies you need to avoid. I would suggest avoiding Easter eggs from Nestle. Okay. Now, I'm not going to say anything for fact here because... They've got, I mean, not that I'll, I mean, they don't care about me and my little podcast here, but they have been accused of privatizing water. For example, they've been bottling water in California where there's been a drought going on for years. There's a lot of controversy behind this company. So I'd look that up. They use a lot of palm oil in their products and they've come out and said they're going to try go for more sustainable palm oil but is does is is that really a thing does that exist and they're a billion or multi-million dollar company surely they can afford just a different type of vegetable fat you know they people with money need to it's up to them to come up with new innovative ways that won't harm the environment and they just don't really seem to care they also won't let their workers organize kind of unions or protests they they apparently threatened to fire them and they have been linked with uh, child labor and slavery in their chocolate production suppliers and not really putting harsh enough regulations on where their chocolates are coming from so I would urge you first of all to avoid that company um heck they might sue me I got no money so good luck Nestle so that's my first little thing secondly You know, if you're going to buy an egg, buy dark chocolate or buy a vegan egg if possible. Because, as I said earlier, the biggest chunk, the biggest carbon footprint that comes from chocolate is actually the production of the raw materials. And of that, the huge chunk is the milk. Because obviously you need to get the cow to the size that needs to be to produce milk. So... I would urge you to buy dark or vegan and there's lovely vegan Easter eggs out there. And as well, typically speaking, if it is a vegan Easter egg, usually they're more ethical and they would be sourcing their chocolate from ethical sources. And if it's not clear on the packaging, send them an email and put pressure on them to do that and do that with with all of the chocolate that you buy if you can, okay? to you know put pressure on on uh on the company themselves find out where do you get your chocolate from do you know how it's sourced i've interviewed people do you remember sharon from jiminy the toy the online toy shop and she has a toy stand she she contacts retailers and makes sure that everything is sourced ethically and that it all comes plastic free and whatnot so there is you it is possible to do that absolutely so Also, avoid excess packaging, obviously, in their Easter egg. Avoid plastic at all costs, which is found mostly in the more luxurious Easter eggs. Do you really care if it's luxurious or not? It's it's chocolate. It's you're just you're going to be eating chocolate. Okay, so we don't need any of this luxury chocolate Easter egg nonsense. I'm taking off my dressing gown. It's so warm. So um, and also avoid getting drawn in or attracted by the little gifts that come with easter eggs like mugs or little toys do you really need it it's usually more expensive as well i know they look nicer that's the thing about easter eggs is they look amazing but maybe make you can make something for them instead you know it's just it's extra clutter that we don't really need and if they're into style and whatnot if it doesn't fit the rest of their their mug collection what's going to happen it is going to turn into a pen holder who knows so avoid being distracted by the little gifts if you can now if you want to be totally eco aware and conscious and friendly you don't actually need to buy an easter egg at all there are so many options out there for other things that you can do for example you can bake something homemade banana bread is a big craze right now so you could bake some muffins or cupcakes if you're gifting instead of gifting eggs to people and kids would appreciate that as well i mean if anything just think of all the air 
inside the Easter egg that's been transported as well. That's another suggestion, you know, for food companies. If there's any food e manufacturing people out there, I'm sorry, my words aren't working very well today. Try out selling 2D chocolate eggs instead because if they're flat, you pack more in and transport wise, you're not transporting so much air because you're literally buying a hollow egg. Do you know what I mean? Whereas a chocolate bar, you're probably getting more chocolate out of and it just makes more sense transport fuel cost wise, yada yada to to do 2D eggs. Why isn't that a thing? Why isn't that a thing? So that was one thing that I had there for food suppliers. Also just, you know, cut out the packaging and source ethically. So if there's any chocolate chocolatiers out there, is that what you call a chocolate maker? You know who you are. That's my suggestion. But back to us ordinary Joes gifting us consumers, gifting eggs and whatnot to people and relatives. Bake home make, home make, bake home make, make homemade cakes or brownies. You can also... Ask the Easter Bunny to bring a book or a secondhand toy. They do that because I, listen to this now, here's some therapy for you. I used to be allergic to chocolate as a child. I found out when I was about seven or eight, I was allergic to chocolate. I was getting these hives all over my body. I was taken to an allergist, Mr. Tackerberry and Carlo, that was his name, and he told me chocolate is one of the things I was allergic to sure enough when I stopped eating chocolate I stopped getting all these hives and then Easter came and I wasn't allowed any chocolate so literally for until I was maybe 14 for about six or seven years the Easter Bunny came never brought chocolate the Easter Bunny instead bought us a book or a computer game this is before computers were like PlayStation 4 though I won't say the year but they were very mild <laughs> PC games um, like card games and the like so the Easter Bunny does listen to requests okay and a secondhand book or secondhand toy is just as good if not better because it lasts longer I mean for any kids listening you can get chocolate almost any time you know and those Easter eggs there's a lot of air in there so you know the Easter egg, the Easter bunny has a lot to be doing than giving a lot of people chocolate eggs full of air. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure, because my Easter bunny loved it, getting a little secondhand book or secondhand toy in there as well. Or even ask them for if you need like a knitted hat or something. I don't know. Well, they might be ab- not be able to do everything, but they're not just about the eggs okay they do other stuff as well the easter bunnies i know because that was me i used to be allergic to chocolate so oh yeah and another thing that you could give is flowers give some seeds or give a little potted plant that someone can pot instead of a of an easter egg because that is the true spirit of easter after all that is life coming back you know so that's sorry i got very excited there then you have charity which of course is very important. We need to donate to charities all throughout the year. But specifically these days, during these times, there's a lot of on-street collections that aren't happening. The likes of Daffodil Day being cancelled. Charity-specific fundraising days not uh, not going ahead. Um, and there's charities like Vita, who I interviewed Holly Hughes in in a previous episode, that work in Eritrea and Ethiopia offsetting carbon locally and improving the community so they're fighting climate change and impacting social change in a positive way at the same time they've got a little something that you can do for for easter it's like a gift card where you're giving to charity instead and holly has sent in a little message and i'll include that here so this is one thing that you could do instead of an easter egg as well Hello, Cara, and everyone listening. Um, thank you so much for having us on again. Um, my name's Holly. I'm the communications officer at Vita. Vita is an Irish NGO that works in East Africa to deliver sustainable livelihoods to rural families who've been impacted by climate change. So just to explain what we're doing, we have three gift cards and each of them kind of tackle a different issue that we are trying to um, fix, I suppose, really in Ethiopia and Eritrea. 
So the first one is a gift card that buys a fuel efficient cook stove for a woman and includes skills and training on how to maintain and repair it. So traditional cooking in Africa is highly inefficient. It cuts down a lot of trees, which contributes to climate change, but it also takes away a lot of a woman's time and energy as she has to travel long distances to collect this firewood. So we have a special fuel efficient cook stove that saves time. It saves money needed for wood if you can't actually get to somewhere to collect it. It also hugely saves energy so it saves trees from being cut down um, it reduces indoor air pollution so things like respiratory illnesses eye disease risk of burns all of things these things disappear so it's actually a really simple way to completely transform a woman's life um, so that's one option and that's 35 euros another uh, gift card we're offering is to give 10 families fruit and vegetable starter packs so what these are, are, these are basically kits with improved seeds, so it could be banana seeds or maize seeds that are specifically adapted to areas and to landscapes that have been affected by climate change. So they're much more resilient and they produce bigger yields, which means that rural farmers or people who are currently unemployed can find a secure and stable income through producing these seeds. So again, we would particularly focus on women with these projects. Um, so they're a really great way of ensuring women, particularly single mothers or women who do not have a man um, to provide income for them, have a means of earning income remaining independence and forging a new pathway out of poverty so those are 60 euro for 10 packs so that's 10 families that will benefit from those and then the final option for anyone who's feeling really generous is a 100 euro gift card that provides five families with improved potato seed skills and training again it's kind of the same principle as the fruit and vegetable packs Potatoes are honestly just the saviour of the world. They are highly nutritious. They're also highly climate resilient. They're able to grow in really adverse weather conditions. So they are perfect for areas of Ethiopia and of Eritrea that are affected by climate change. So in buying this gift, you are giving five families access to this amazing improved seed that will improve their crop yields, that will secure themselves, their income, their families, their future against climate change. So those are the three gifts that we're offering. You can buy them on our website um, at www.vita.ie forward slash donate. Um, we understand that this is such a difficult time for everyone and it can feel really strange to essentially be asking for support at this time. But really, this is just for anyone who might have capacity to give something and wants to give it to the global good. And I suppose just to say support whatever organization you support to remember them during this time that maybe the money we might be saving on fancy coffees we would have been getting out or pints or brunch or whatever it is that this might be a nice way to to kind of reinvest that money in a in a globally good way um okay i think i've rambled on long enough i hope everyone listening has a really peaceful safe easter and sending sending everyone um all of the good vibes from vita thanks Thanks. That was Holly and her suggestion. So there you go. You don't need to get a chocolate Easter egg. You can give the gift of bettering the environment and bettering people's lives as well. You know, I'm sure if anyone has been doing what I've been doing and my housemates have been doing, we've been hoarding chocolate anyway, you know. And plus you can't get to their house a lot of the time. So these are some ideas that you can do instead. Now, games, Easter egg hunts, treasure hunts. I love these. I love them. I love them so much. You can do this with little toys that you already have. And maybe whoever gets the most has a, has a, gets a prize, gets chocolate instead. These are for people or the Easter bunny. If the Easter bunny is listening, you can do this as well. Whoever organized, because it was my mom did the treasure hunts. The Easter bunny was always too busy. So if the Easter bunny is organizing your treasure hunt or your egg hunt instead of parents or an adult, the Easter bunny, I know, listens to my podcast as well. You can use little toys, little things that you already have. And then whoever gets the most, they get a chocolate prize because it's not what you're looking for as a child that's the most exciting part it's the fact that it's hidden and you have to find something so that is the most important thing right so it could be anything and also I've seen online in a, in the journey to zero waste Facebook group that there is 
these little tiny wooden eggs that you can get wooden eggs that are hollow on the inside and you can open them and you can put something in so you can put a little sweet or a little chocolate or a little toy or or a seed or a tiny little daisy or something inside that and that is what you go looking for in the easter egg hunt so there's so many options out there as opposed to buying a load of cream eggs that you just feel bad for at the end of the day and your dentist would appreciate this as well shout out to all the dentists who are doing amazing work even though you scare me but i love you guys thank you so this would also keep your dentist happy as well now we're nearing the end of the chocolate and the easter eggs i'll just go back over this yeah that's pretty much it right so that is my suggestions for the easter eggs now two more things left that i just quickly want to talk about which is decorations and food traditions so of course when it comes to decor people like to well not so much in Ireland thankfully but it's becoming a trend in in west some western countries to purchase dyed baby chicks I don't think you need me to explain why you shouldn't do this, but just please do not do this. Please do not share photographs of this online. Do not endorse it. Do not encourage it. They are literally dunking baby chicks in dye and selling these pastel coloured baby chickens. And that's that's just not okay. So we do need to avoid that. One movement that I've seen, which I love, is because obviously we're stuck indoors these days, kids are getting out there and they're painting the front of their houses with chalk so if you've got a brick facade in the front of your house they're getting chalk pastel chalk and they're coloring in each brick a different color and it makes the front of the house look really colorful and of course make sure it's a it's a safe chalk to use and it's they always wash off with water in that and that's a lovely way to decorate the house and brighten up the neighborhood these days which of course we always need and the easter bunny will definitely find your gaff so that's one thing you could do. Um, one huge thing people love to do at Easter time, and I used to do this as well, is paint chicken eggs. So quickly, I just want to go over this. I would ask that you don't. I mean, if you're already eating eggs and you have them in the house, do. But please don't buy eggs just to do this just to blow out the the yolk and and make scrambled eggs with and I ask this because in Ireland every year there's around three million egg laying hens farmed in Ireland more than half of those are caged and a caged hen basically lives in a a4 size cage barely enough room to stand up can barely turn around and lie down again and it's a cage so it's feet get stuck in the in the cages a lot of the time as well and even when it comes to free range a lot of the time they're cramped in a barn and they've got access through a small barn door to the outside for so many hours a day so free range there's not like a whole lot of uh not a huge difference unfortunately between cage but obviously if you're going to buy them do buy free range buy local from down the road if you can but please do not buy caged eggs, obviously. I mean, we're stuck indoors at the moment. So I can only imagine what it's like for those hens in those little cages. It must be like us being shut in our in our shower or an ensuite or a bath. But you could stand up, you can turn around, you can lie down, that's it. So... We can, I mean, we're going mad just being stuck at our house. So I'm really empathising with all the caged animals out there that we're farming and using for entertainment and whatnot. I really feel for them. So instead of um, of painting these eggs, obviously that's not even, that's what I'm talking ethically there. I mean, the, the production of eggs they're genetically chickens are genetically modified to lay 300 eggs a year when naturally they're only supposed to lay 12 like once a month and this takes a lot of energy from your body and hence their lifespan originally is supposed to be between eight and ten years but instead it's now back down to to they're, they're usually slaughtered at around 70 weeks about a year and a half that's their limit when they slow down production they stop producing and then they're slaughtered and then of course male chicks in the 
egg industry are completely useless. So there's people paid a lot of money to find out the sex of a baby chick by squeezing it. And if you find out that it's it's male, it goes onto a different treadmill um, thing, not a treadmill, a conveyor belt that goes into a grinder and they're ground up alive or they are suffocated. And that ha- that's, a, that's a legal practice. That's the norm in Ireland. So for a time like Easter, where the whole idea is to celebrate life and fertility and and new life I wouldn't if you're going out just to buy eggs to decorate for Easter I would ask that you don't because it's kind of doing the opposite supporting an industry which has a lot of flaws in it so instead of decorating eggs actual eggs actual chicken eggs or animal eggs decorate them on a piece of paper and you can stick them up on the window the kids can stick them up on the window they can be really really colorful and you can see them better as well and they're also easier to paint because I do remember doing this as a child and I just got it all over my fingers and I didn't really enjoy the process so draw them on a piece of paper um that's that is my recommendation instead you can make origami shaped eggs you can get little wooden eggs those hollow wooden eggs that etsy are selling you know paint those there's other options out there or if you do use them if you do paint them please do your best to preserve them because they do last a long time i know they're delicate but try reuse them because the poor chickens are suffering enough so when it comes to dinner this is the one thing that i don't get people eating lamb at Easter. Again, this is a time to celebrate life and fertility. Why are people eating baby lambs? They should let the baby lambs live because they just should. So in the real spirit of celebrating springtime, coming into summer, baby lambs, baby chickens, baby rabbits, all these, the trees budding, daffodils growing, The best way you can celebrate that is by harming no life. Plant trees, plant life, create life, let life grow. Have a vegan roast on your on your Sunday if you can. If you can have reduce the amount of animal products. That that's what that's how my brain is working or seeing this anyway. If you can't go completely plant based or completely vegan, don't know what to do. I mean, there is a lot of places out there, a lot of accounts that you can look up recipes on like the happy pear rosanna purcell she's pretty good rosanna davison oh they've got the same first names the or oh, ross purcell she goes by i think there's a lot of there's a lot of accounts you can follow for ideas for meals on for for this spring celebrate life by celebrating it as opposed to taking it away that would be my suggestion so don't eat baby lambs don't eat try not to eat any animals on easter sunday and originally the whole idea for in jesus's eyes as far as i can remember was to not eat any meat or fish over the whole weekend and uh we kind of forgot that i think so put the rack of lamb down and eat eat a lovely moodly manor roast or tofurkey there's a lot of and the funny thing is the vegan aisles the free farm aisles they're they're easily they're stocked they're well stocked in the supermarkets there's a lot of options there if you can okay if you can this is just my personal plea now that is pretty much it you guys I don't think I've any more notes. I've talked about chocolate in general. We buy a lot of Easter eggs. I can't get over that. Three and a half per person. That is crazy. There's a lot of packaging. There's a lot of air inside that egg. A lot of waste. Do you really need it? Buy chocolate bar instead. Try buy dark. Try buy plant-based chocolate. The health food shops are still open. They're selling vegan Easter eggs. And dark Easter eggs, you know, try get those. The ones with less milk, ideally buy each other seeds or potted plants instead some flowers donate to charities like vita animal rights organizations that are struggling at the moment companies that are working on the front line trying to keep us all safe and healthy you know there's so much more to this than just chocolate and if anyone's like me you've been eating a heap of chocolate anyway so 
that would be my suggestions. And then when it comes to decorations, don't be buying any live chickens. That is barbaric, crazy. Paint little chickens instead. Do a lot of art on your on your on your on your uh, sketchbooks at home, and don't go buying eggs just to decorate them, please. And don't eat lamb. Don't try to celebrate spring by. Not eat, not eating any animals and not harming any human life as as much as possible. In future, I will be doing a more in depth episode on chocolate. I think and the fair trade industry. I know we don't want to hear it, but we have to hear it. I'm not looking forward to it either, but it will be done at some point. But there's all these nice options that we have at the moment that we can do instead. I hope you're all keeping well I'm going a bit mad lads not gonna lie I'm uh, on video here as well recording for a little snippet of uh, social media and I've just been dancing for the for the whole podcast I hope you're you're keeping well and safe staying indoors washing your hands minding each other getting outside when you can into the garden to get some fresh air if you're lucky enough to have a garden or I just sending I'm sending you lots and lots of love and let's just have a mindful happy easter if you've any requests for topics let me know know. next Next week's episode episode, i'm going to be be looking at the the bidet bidet. toilet Toilet paper paper versus the bidet bidet. but i hope you found found a few to add to your own book of eco-friendly sustainable living here happy easter guys love you stay safe mind yourselves and i'll talk to you soon